Good evening and welcome to the U Talk Show. I'm currently slogging through TAFE work. TAFE is one of Australia's, no, it is Australia's largest registered training organization in basically every state. And it's it's the case that a certificate can, from TAFE can often mean more than a qualification or a degree that you've gotten from a university because their primary focus is getting people job ready. Now, this may seem like a tangent, but I assure you it's not, because today we're discussing why everyone's outsourcing job training and why it's a bit of a problem. Now, I have some thoughts on this, but Kyle also has some thoughts on this, so I'd like to see what he's thought of that I haven't, or what he's thought of that I have before I launch into an invective. Kyle. I don't know the meaning of the word invective, but that kind of like intellectual curiosity, seriously, Horst, if I was gay or if you were a woman, you know how to capture my heart when you're not even trying. Well, that's the trick. The moment I start trying, I'll be thoroughly incompetent at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just need to be here, you beautiful man. Um, all right, before this gets slightly awkward, um, why is outsourcing job training a problem? Well, I've I've got two reasons. Um, oh shit, I forgot to set the timer. Um, <laughs> I forgot to set the timer. No, uh, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. I'm just gonna say eight minutes. There we go. Okay, so um, yeah, <laughs> just that quick distraction. Um, so I've got two two main thoughts on this. Um, first, hyper specific hyper specific degrees means that job training that outsourcing job training is a problem because those degrees can often only apply to maybe a very few companies or a very few roles and they can leave people without a job if while they're getting that degree the job market changes mm -hmm. like if, if the economy shifts even a, a even a degree you know even a small amount that can leave you with little and and sometimes even no transferable skills and you've just spent, what, a minimum six months getting that degree? Like maybe if it was a part-time course that was six months or whatever, you, you crammed it all in three months. That's, you know, even in that time, things can shift quite a lot. You know, it's, um, hell, the, the US subprime mortgage crisis, that shit hit in, what, a couple of days? That's when it, could, that's when it really got bad. You know, that's... Like, I mean, it's kind of a big example to use for, for something like this, but still, I, I think that that, uh, I'm losing my train of thought here, but essentially, I guess the point I'm trying to make is hyper-specific degrees, which effectively are training for one specific job, which may only be at, what, three companies maybe, that mm. that should be in-house training. That should not sure. be, that, that should not be outsourced to a TAFE especially because everyone might look at that job and you might get a massive oversupply. And then, you know, that brings the, the value of those people down because, you know, supply and demand in the job market. So they're able to offer less and Funny then joke. get, you know, more people. And, um, and yeah, so, you know, that's the first thought. The second thought is that it burdens the individual often with a costly qualification. Now, TAFE is usually good in that, you know, a lot of the courses there don't cost you a dime, but then there's university courses, even a six month university course, that can be a couple of grand, yep. you know, even if you Absolutely. put it on Hex, like even if you put it on Hex or, you know, Help or whatever it is now, like it's, help, it's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's a bit, like, it's a bit much to ask people to, to go into debt for a very hyper specific bit of training, which really should be in house. And then businesses can view workers as replaceable cogs in that machine rather than an investment that they're making. They're not investing in the training of, a, of, a, of an employee. They're, they're just picking a, a replaceable cog from those who are qualified. You know, the, the, degree, the degree of power that, get, that gives businesses in negotiation and the corporate culture, the, the business culture that that creates is one where human resources, the most important resource in my opinion, are easily replaceable and not valued. That to me is a problem. And so we need to stop outsourcing very esoteric job training for that reason, in my opinion. Horst, your thoughts in the four and four minutes and 40 seconds that we have left. 
Oh, I think you've hit the nail on the head in large part. Oh, did I already cover if what you, you were going to say? To, if you want to develop workers as an asset, you have to invest in them. And hmm. like, I'm currently doing a legal services certificate with TAFE. And a large part of this is not understanding the law. It's being able to work in a simulated firm, getting used to the way that a specific firm does things. That's that's not really the job of a TAFE to teach. The TAFE gives you the mm. underpinnings. You go into the workplace and they teach you how you want how you are expected to use those underpinnings. Yeah. Actually, if I could say something on that, there used to be like a concept in, in the workplace of like an adjustment period, a period yes. of time in which you've just arrived and you're going to adjust to the way people do things here and you're going to kind of meld yourself into the company, you know? And yep. in that way, like in being able to do that, um, you know, that that's for lack of a better term, separated the boys from the men. You know, it was, you were essentially, if you were a workable and amicable person who was willing to work with other people, you could meld yourself into a different way of doing things in order to work well with a company that has given you that employment. Yep. That's not, that's not here anymore. There's no concept of that anymore. That's crazy. You know, that was there when I was young, before I entered the workplace. And by the time I get into it, it's not there anymore. That's insane yep. to me. Anyway, in the three minutes that we have left, it's a break of thoughts? the social contract. Yeah, well, God, everything's break of the social contract these days, in and that meantime, is a different problem in and of itself. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, when I say that, I mean basically the social contract of society it's has been, been completely torn apart. Yeah, completely well, dissolved, torn apart. Dissolved is a nice way of putting it. That just fades away. I imagine it being ripped to shreds by a bunch of assholes who I call the Liberal Party. The Liberal Party aren't responsible for everything you don't like. Okay, they're not responsible for everything. Look, they may not be responsible for furries, okay? But they are responsible for everything in government, okay? I'm just kidding. I don't care about furries. Okay. (laughs) Weird Uh, facts, but okay. I'm not sure that was a flex. It was a little but, bit of a flex. I mean, I don't know. I thought I was just making a joke about pretending to hate furries, but somehow I flexed there. Hoorah! Okay, <laughs> but yeah, the rest of this is that there are there are qualifications which exist as checkboxes. I have spent most of today fighting AutoCAD to draw a layout of my home office because I am required to participate in environmentally sustainable work practices. I'm going for engineering. Engineering, by definition, trends towards the environmentally sustainable. Engineers understand that every single time you fight nature, you screw it. Every single time you fight nature, you are fighting against something which is larger and stronger than you and will wear you down. We design bridges so that they yield just enough that the wind doesn't make them just fall over and give up. We design buildings so that earthquakes are survivable. We know not to fight nature. We know not to screw up the environment. There are 27 training hours being given to this environmentally sustainable work practice module that is the same stuff we all learned in primary school in Australia. You turn the lights off when you leave the room. You don't leave the taps running. You don't waste water. You don't take a giant steaming dump in the stormwater drain. And you don't put toilet cleaner down the stormwater drain either. This is all really basic stuff. But Do that. <laughs> to <laughs> check a box. To check a box. TAFE is insisting that I demonstrate that I can not do things that are koalas on fire. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Actually, the part of that which I, which for some reason I focused on. um... Fuck! I'm not Gladys (laughs) Berejiklian. I mean, if he didn't say it, I might have. But that that being said, um, you know, we've we've basically run out of time. Um, but I, I would like to say, is that the reason? Because when you said that engineering by its um, definition tends to go towards sustainability, is yep. all of what you just explained then the, like the reason for that? Because I, did, I, did, I was confused when you said that earlier. I couldn't 
before we started recording. Okay, so engineers are fundamentally lazy. Okay. Except we call it efficiency. (laughs) Engineers are given to not wasting resources. What is efficiency except optimize laziness? Yeah, exactly. Like it is it is in the engineer's mindset for the most part to do the best they can with what they have. And we all know at this point in time that there is one Earth. There isn't somewhere that we can just pop into a rocket and fuck off to, no matter how Hmm. much Daddy Musk wants us to think that that's a possibility. (laughs) Interesting. We know there are no take backsies when you do the damage. Yeah. And every single engineering job is informed by the evidence. It it, it has to be. It's like, I, I would like. I would like you less glamorous cousins. I would like to talk more about it, um, but I mean, it is slightly getting off topic, and we've run out of time at the same time. Um, mm. But for all those reasons, um, you know, the esoteric nature of it, the um, being trained to literally work in a specific law firm, which I find incredibly odd. It's somehow it's, it's got a simulated even more law strange. firm. It doesn't even exist. And let me tell you, I am the most overworked paralegal ever because I have to explain high school level legal studies to lawyers. Wow. All right. Well, uh, I guess, you know, with that, we'll end it. Um, somehow both more and less confused than, than when we started. And yeah, that's the way of it. <laughs> yeah. The world today, somehow more and less confusing every day. Have fun, everyone. Take care, y'all.